Amen. Hallelujah. I think I have a pretty good husband. I'm really, really blessed to have that covering. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it so much. Praise God. Well, today uh, the Lord is having me release to you what I've heard so far about the upcoming year. And now you may say, well, it's only September. And so that means three and a half months from now, 2023 will be here, and we'll have all ourselves prepared, right? I mean, so we have that opportunity. And also, it is the Hebrew year that is 5723. 83. 5783. I'm 50 years behind. 5783. So the number that corresponds is the three anyway. But in the Hebrew calendar, we get the new year coming up September 25th. And that is called Rosh Hashanah, which is the Feast of Trumpets. And, and this is the time of the blowing of the trumpets. And it is a declaration that Jesus, they don't know that, Jesus is coming. Do you hear me? Yes. It, it's a declaration of the coming of the Messiah. And it has to be heralded on this day every year. And so here we are at this juncture. You can choose if you want to celebrate both. That's what I do. I, that which should be 5783. 2023, 5783. Some, we're trying to jump around here, but 5783 is what it is. And so as I, as I approach this, I'm asking you, to open your heart to consider something. I'm asking you to consider the understanding and study of God's calendar. Now, we have a Sunday school class that happens every Sunday right here that will teach you about our roots and will teach you what time it is. And you say, why do you care about that? I care about that. Well, number one, I love Israel. And this church loves Israel. And we bless Jerusalem. And as we do that, we are blessed. And so, number one, that's why. But number two, it is because when you're studying the word and you come across a place and it says, on the fourth month, on the 15th day, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. On the second month, on the 12th day. And it, you think that that's January or February or March or April, but no, 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 no. It is according to the Hebrew calendar. And so if you know those and you know what time it is, then you can, when you're reading your Bible, you can actually know exactly what time it was when that was written. So what I love to do, and I know Pastor Tim and Carrie do this too, is I love to see what was God saying in the word of God during that month and preach accordingly because it's in the word of God. So this month, as Pastor Carrie said, it's the month of Elul, which is the month that is the king is in the field. That's what it is called. The month of the king is in the field. And that means he has given access to everyone. And according to, I believe Pastor Tim said it, to draw near. You have an access, a special access at this time. This is the time that the king, in, in ancient times, he would come out of his palace and he would put a tent out in a, in a field, just a farmer's field. And then people from all over and all all kinds of statuses of life could come and draw near and could come inside that tent and could make requests, could have a conversation. And so that's exactly what month it is. And that's why we call our Wednesday nights draw near this month. I'm just 
wanting you to see some of the thread of the line of why God has us do some things that we do. Okay? You good with that? And so as I looked at this, and I'm looking at this Hebrew year that's coming up September 25th, and I'm considering the number three because that's the number 5783. You can take that down now. 5783. And in Hebrew, every number has a corresponding letter. So the corresponding letter to the number three is Gamel. Say that with me, Gamel. So that would be like C, A, B, C. It's the third letter. And so this letter, what happens is, if you, go, if you study it, is there's also a pictograph of this word. And the picture of this letter tells us something about what God intends for that year. Now, you can read the horoscope or read the word of God. But he intends for us to know these things. He really doesn't want us in the dark. And I think too many times we are, don't you? But, but we don't have to be. We can be a people that understand the times. Like Issachar, the tribe of Issachar was known as a tribe that understood the times. And not only that, but what the, what the people of God should do during those times. How many of you would like to have that Issachar anointing? I want to know the times and I want to know what to do in the times. And we are in some interesting times. So it's important to know what time it is, and what to do. And you know that by seeking him. So when I focus today, you're going to hear me explain, but I'm going to emphasize the prophetic side of what God is saying about this 5783. Everybody say three. three. And Gamel. Now that's your Hebrew lesson for today. Gamel has a meaning to it. And I just about jumped off my chair when I found out what it was. The meaning for this letter is retribution. So this will be a year of retribution. Now, you want to wait till January? You go right ahead. But I'll be, I'll be claiming the word come September 25th. And I'm already going to be praying into it. Because I found out that that is one of the meanings of Gamel. And, it, and, and the thing about it, you need to know this. It means in retribution, it means there's coming, coming blessing to you. And there's also coming judgment to you. And so depending on what you choose, you hear me? On what you choose will decide whether blessings from God come or judgments of God come. That's what year we're coming into. And really, I saw the picture of the old-fashioned set of scales. The just, scales of justice. And we get to decide which side tips. Pastor Kilpatrick lately has been saying this. He's been saying, you know, God is for you. He is for you, and then the devil is against you. So if God is for you, and the devil is against you, who decides the outcome? Because God is voting yes for you, and the devil is voting no for you. What are you going to vote? It's really up to you, because it's your choice. Blessings, judgments. I think blessings. I vote with God, and I vote with the blessings that come with walking with God. So you say, but there's always the possibility of retribution. Yes, but when you're in the timing of retribution, you will see an acceleration of retribution. Hallelujah. And some of you really need to see that happen because in that word is included the meaning restitution or justified repayment. 
I don't know about you, but the devil tried to steal from me lately. Anybody besides me? And, and you know, that is illegal trespassing. Just like Pastor Tim said about the blood of Jesus, that is illegal trespassing when he gets on your ground. And you have that authority that has come from the blessing of God to be able to kick him right out of there. But sometimes he will, on his way out, sneak a few things. But the word of God says, when the thief is found out, he must return seven times what has been stolen. So this is part of retribution that the Lord wants you to know. It's a time that is a, a time of restitution. It is a time of recompense. And it is a time of justified repayment. And God, right now, we say this is coming to the people of God as they enter in with faith into this year. Hallelujah. So we're going to look at Psalm 119, and something's going to make sense to you that maybe hasn't made sense before. It did to me. It, it, everybody knows that's the longest psalm in the Bible. And you might notice that it'll, it'll be sectioned off, Aleph, Beth, Gimel. Oh, wait. Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Dalith, Hey, Bath. It's like, it's the alphabet. So the third, Gimel, begins in verse 17. So in the year of Gimel, you should probably know what verse 17 in Gimel says. You're going to be all right. Well... If you wondered if it was in your Bible, there it is. It's just a subtitle, Gimel. And it says in verse 17, here's the prayer to pray. Deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and keep your word. Read that with me. Deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and keep your word. There's something about the abundance that God brings to you when it's bountiful and just floods you like, like a river. It's coming over you and you're just overcome with the goodness and the blessings of God. And when you're in that state, you ain't worried. That's called bountiful. And then you're able to really live an abundant life and you're able to truly Keep the word of God with much more ease. Yes or no? Yeah. So that's a prayer for this, this year. But it goes on in verse 16. Open my eyes that I may behold wonderful things from your law. So this year of retribution is also a year of revelation. Open my eyes that I can see. Wonderful things from, the, from your law. If you have a hard time understanding the scripture, if you have a hard time getting something out of the scripture, just pray that verse. Just ask him to open your eyes that you can receive revelation because he wants to give it to you. And if you say, well, that's Old Testament, I'll take you to Ephesians 1.18 if you mess with me. Because it says, may the eyes of your heart be enlightened. That means opened up to revelation. So do you want that this year? How many of you want that this year? I want that this year, Jesus. Now I'm going to tell you another Gimel word. It's interesting. Another Gimel word that we can get from the pictograph is camel. And you may think to yourself, what does a camel have to do with anything in the upcoming year? Well... In biblical times, the camel recommend, represented bounty, abundance, and supply coming to you. So this is a year of the camels are coming. The camels are coming. You can like it or not. 
My supply is coming. My supply is coming. I'm going to receive. I welcome the camels. I say, come on. Bring it on, Lord. Now, you, the thing is, it's like, hold on. It's like we are people that sit back and hope they come. But maybe we just don't really think they'll come. But another key word for this year is faith. Hebrews 11, 6 says, and without faith, what, you know it, it is impossible to, what, to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and what else, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Some translations say, those who diligently seek him. I love this verse. You might as well call it a, a verse of the year because we're going to be a people that walk in faith. We're going to walk in faith. We're going to lift up our eyes and see camels coming. And if there's anything in the way of the camels, I'm going to get out there on my pathway and get it off. Right. Make room. And so we want to have faith in this season because, and we must believe that God is. What is God? What do you mean, believe God is? This is what he said to Moses. Just tell him I am sent you. He is everything you're not. He's everything you're not able to do. And as my mom used to say, he is the altogether other. He's everything altogether other than you. And what you could ever come up with. That's the I am. He's the healer. He's the deliverer. He's the savior. He's the provider. You want me to keep going? He is the witness. I want you to know he is. So you got to believe. Believe this year. He is who he says he is. And that's why I wanted to sing that song. Because if you, you got to speak the name of Jesus. We're going to speak the name of Jesus. We're going to clear the way with the name of Jesus and every other name that God calls himself that clears the way before us. And believe him that he is exactly who he says he is. So he said, I want you to have faith to believe that God is. And that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. So I underlined rewarder in my Bible. And the reason is because it's, it's actually part of the de definition of retribution. So he's rewarding. He's bringing a reward. He wants you to know all those years and all that you sowed and all that you put in and how you cried out to God and all that work that you did for the sake of the kingdom and all the persecution that you took. He just says, I want you to know I'm a rewarder. And I want to reveal myself to you this year as a rewarder. But you're going to have to have faith that he is. Hallelujah. And so he is. And he is a rewarder. I love uh, Proverbs 22, 14. It says the reward of humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, life. So there is, there's different rewards. When you go through the scripture, there, I, I was doing that this week. I was looking at all the different rewards that God promises to give us and, and that he responds to. And one of them's prayer and fasting. He, he promises a reward. So there's things where God promises that he's going to be a rewarder. And our Hebrew scripture says, if you're a seeker, and you would not be here this morning at this church that's hard to find. That you never know what's going to happen. You would not be here if you weren't a seeker. So he's a rewarder of those who seek him. And I am purposing in my heart this year to be a seeker like never before. 
Anybody with me? I know there's resistance. And let me tell you why. There's resistance to this because, not from, I'm not talking about people in the room. There's resistance to this because I laid a foundation that's based on something that is Jewish. That is Hebrew. And there is a false doctrine in the church today called replacement theology. And in that theology, there is a belief that the church has taken the place of Israel. But we haven't. Israel is Israel. And the church is the church. And, and, but guess what? We got grafted in. So if Israel gets a promise, so do I. So don't be upset about it. I mean, just clear your mind of anything that upset you about this is the way we're starting this message. His reward is with him. So Isaiah 40 is familiar to us. Watch this. Verse 3. A voice is calling, clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be lifted up and let every mountain and hill be made low. And let the rough ground become a plain and the rugged terrain a broad valley. And then, then, what's going to happen? Then. The glory of the Lord will be revealed in all flesh. It doesn't say the church. It doesn't say Israel. It doesn't say believers. All flesh will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. That's what, that's what God said. So he said, when you come to my highway, and if there's a mountain in your way, if there's an obstacle, and in this, in this particular prophecy, I believe the mountain is representing the mountain of pride. So if you're lifted up, if you have something in your life that is lifted up, it has to come down. And if you dwell down here in the valley, and you're just down all the time, and you're depressed and in self-pity or whatever it is down here, it has to come up. And all the places that are rough, where your walk isn't solid, where the ground is hard, it needs to make, be made straight. And then the glory of the Lord will reveal. Oh my goodness, that's the best reward. That, isn't that the best reward? I think that's the best reward. I think that's the one I want, Lord. I want the glory this year. I want the glory this year. I want all flesh to see the glory this year, Lord. Let all flesh see your glory, Lord. Let the skeptics, let the cynics, let the unbelievers, let them see the glory this year, Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. So, I'm still over here in Isaiah 40. How far did I get? Oh. So, let's skip down for the sake of time to verse 10. Behold, the Lord God will come with might, with his arm ruling for him. Behold, look at it, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. Whoa. The Lord God's coming. Just get your road fixed. Repair your road. This would be a good time to have some construction done in your life. Repair the road. Get those high mountains of pride. And I got to be right. And whatever that means to you. And, and let it come on down. Because with humility, there is riches and honor and life. So I want that mountain to come down in my life. I remember this old prophet lady and Carrie, you remember her, that used to 
come to our church once a month. And, and then on Sunday night, we'd have her to our house or we'd go to her hotel, her and her sister's hotel room. And um, I, was pretty, I was pretty impressed with what, how God was using me that time. Because, I mean, I was, I was just this young whippersnapper kid. And I could not believe how the power of God was moving through me. And I, I was just stunned at how so many people showed up to hear me when, I'm t when I was preaching. I was really impressed with the fact of how I could prophesy things. And they would come to pass. Oh, no, no, I didn't tell people that. But I was. So one day, I just said a little something. I just said a little something. And I said something like, you know, isn't it cool how God's using me? And she got up out of her chair and she put her finger out like this. And it was not one of those accusing fingers. It was the finger of a prophet. And she starts walking toward me and I start backing up. And when she got to me, she put her finger into my chest. And she said, young lady... You need to either come down or God will bring you down. I said, you knew about that? <laughs> I didn't even know that's what it was. And she gave me my very first lesson on pride. I think it's the biggest hindrance and it's always connected to religious spirit every time. Pride can quote scripture. Pride can beat you up. I'm telling you, watch for it. Watch out. It's lifted up against the knowledge of God. It is a mountain on his highway that has got to come down. I don't have time to preach the rest of that chapter. But I want to tell you, at least look at verse 29. Because here's the reward. Besides the glory. And I actually think it's connected to the glory. Verse 29 says of chapter 40. And he gives strength to the weary. He gives strength to the weary. And to him who lacks might, he increases power. There has been a powerless church. Not, I'm not talking about this one. I'm talking about body of Christ. Powerless. Because, mostly because of prayerlessness. But he says, when you take care of the road... And my glory begins to be revealed across the whole earth. When that happens, I'll give you the strength you need to do what I've called you to do. And if you, like, if you lack having might, he says, I'm going to increase your power. I'm going to increase your power. And it says, even if youths grow weary and tired and vigorous young men stumble badly, yet those who wait for the Lord, here's your reward, will gain new strength. It's new. It means it's a strength like you've never had before. It's not the strength you got from your nap. This is a new strength. It's not the strength from your vacation. It's a new strength. And as you wait on the Lord, and that means to hope expectantly on God, which is the same as faith, which is a word for this year. You are promised new strength. You are promised a prophetic edge on your life because you are like an eagle that will mount up and see things from the perspective of God. You won't have any problem snatching up a snake, biting it in two and throwing it to the ground. And it says we're going to run and not get tired and walk and not become weary. Hallelujah. I'm waiting on that too. I got faith for that, Jesus. Thank you for your reward that comes with you. When he comes, when his presence comes, so does his reward. And so I asked the Lord for just one example in the New Testament in case any of you had trouble with me just being in the Old Testament. And you say, why aren't you saying these things? Because I know people. <laughs> That's all. I 
See, I upgraded today. Perrier, upgraded. Okay, I ain't the only thing I'm upgrading. So, if you can look at Luke chapter 6, here's an example, I believe, of this coming year. And it tells us in verse 6, wait till you hear this, Pastor Tim. On another Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and was teaching. And there was a man there whose right hand, did you hear what Pastor Hand? Pastor Tim said about the right hand. His right hand was withered. So the right hand is, as Pastor Tim said, it is the hand of authority. But his right hand was withered. I don't know. Maybe you feel that way. Maybe you feel like you, you're just not operating in the power and the anointing and the authority that God has for you. Maybe you feel like it's, it's withered up. Maybe it used to be. And now it's not like it was. But he's, he, he, he's coming to where you are. And Jesus came to church that day. And the Pharisees weren't used to the presence at all. And this man has this withered right hand, and it literally means it was dry and it was shrunk. One thing God did tell me about this upcoming year is it will be a year where he binds up the fractures of his people because he is bringing his people into wholeness. And as we come into wholeness and we are not fractured any longer, we're going to be able to take ground like never before. I believe it with all my heart. I believe it for myself, and I believe it for you. It, don't think I think that I'm completely whole. I do not. Our family has been under attack in the worst kind of way you could imagine. However, I am being made whole. You can. You, it's, you can vote. Devil says no. God says yes. What do you say? Yes. You get to pick. I choose wholeness. Yes. I don't choose withered. I don't choose a, a decrease in my authority or my prophetic unction or my ability to, to look at things from the heights. I do not expect myself to dry up. But I expect revival. And I expect God to use my right hand. As part of it. How about your right hand? You think God could use your right hand? He could use you to lay hands on the sick and they would recover? Could you, would he use your right hand to cast out demons? Would he use your right hand to raise up the lame and the afflicted? How about that? Can you begin to believe that God would use you to do that with your right hand? And so God says to you, you you're going to have to stay in a place where the river runs. Otherwise, you get dry. And then here's the problem. So th this man, he's, he's got a withered hand, right hand. And the scribes and the Pharisees were watching Jesus closely. To see if he healed on the Sabbath. Not so that they, they could see him heal on the Sabbath. Or that a miracle came to town. They're watching him that they might find a reason to accuse him. I have experienced this firsthand. Have you ever experienced that firsthand? That you're being watched. Not for the good you might do. But for what you might do that could be accused. That's like, like people picking at you. And they were, they were there. They will show up. A religious spirit will always show up right before the miracle. Right before. And so, verse 8. But he knew what they were thinking. And he said to the man with the withered hand, get up and come forward. And he got up and he came forward. This is not done in our regular synagogue meetings. I mean, this guy is not even allowed in the temple because of his withered hand. And now you're bringing attention to him. You're putting his witheredness out in front of everybody.
but he knows what they're thinking. So don't get hung up on what they're thinking. It's like Pastor Kerry says, who cares what they're thinking? There's Jesus already took the blame. He already received the pointing of the finger. And already Satan is taking the fallout, I promise you. Because if you let those accusations come into your heart, it will dry you up like a prune. I just got to tell this. I got to tell this because I, I, I was so excited this morning because I heard something that was a blessing to me. Because I happen to believe that you can have revival that never stops. I believe that. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that I need John Ramirez or Lydia Morrow or anybody else to come in here or Pastor Kilpatrick. I can have revival that never stops. They just come throw another log on the fire. That's it. You know, I'm not asking them to come to light my fire. I'm asking them to come to throw another log on the fire. And so, so this morning, here's the pastor that has pastored two revivals in his lifetime that, uh, that was worldwide impactful. But he walks in revival, and his people walk in revival. And, and, and just like what's happening in this place, if you're in this place, you can do this. You can walk in revival if you want to, because revival is here. And so, Pastor Kilpatrick said, he says, now... Oceans, they ebb and flow. And I have heard more pastors than I want to tell you tell me when I would start to get discouraged because things weren't quite as popping as they were. And he, he would tell me, well, there's the ebb and the flow of revival and sometimes it goes out and sometimes it comes in and pastor Kilpatrick said you are not an ocean you are a river that perpetually flows you're a river there's a river there's a river inside of you you are you are ebbing and flowing your your revival doesn't need to come and go based on your emotions Based on how you feel that day, you either have it or you don't. And I believe this house is a house of revival. I believe it with all my heart. I believe it with all my heart. And so you get to pick. You can vote with God on that. Or the devil on that. I vote with God. So, so Jesus brings this withered guy right up in front of everybody. And he says, hey guys, the religious people. He says, hey guys, is it, is it okay if I heal on the Sabbath? They don't answer. After looking around at all of them, I can just imagine his eyes. Like, it's okay if I heal. It's okay if I do a miracle today. Okay, you got nothing to say about it? Stretch out your hand. Stretch out your hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored. Glory to God. And his hand was restored. This is retribution. Right in the face of a religious spirit. And verse 11 says, But they themselves, who? The religious people. Were filled with rage and discussed together what they might do with Jesus. You know they still do that. That's, they still do that. They still discuss what they might do with you if you don't calm down. You, need, you know what? You're just too wild for me. You people are weird. You know what? You're, you're just, you know, you're just, 
You think you're prophetic too. You think, you think God speaks to you? You think, you think you can hear the voice of God? People will still, people will still be looking for how, my, what they can do with you. What will it take to take Lenora and Jody Moran down? What would it take to take our pastors down? Let's see, they say in hell. We can do this, we can do this, we can do this. But we have a river. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So, this is how I felt like I was supposed to close this time. And, and I want to thank my honey because he brought it to my attention this morning. And it went right. <laughs> they said, thank you, honey. <laughs> I'm the only one that calls him honey, okay? Just... <laughs> oh. I feel like there's something else here. Just a moment. Okay. So, this withered man's hand is an example of being brought into wholeness. We don't know if he was that way from birth or something happened to him. I don't know what happened to you. I don't know if it happened to you in the womb. I don't know if it happened to you in church. I don't know if it happened to you in your family. I don't know if it happened to you when you were 10 or 12. I don't know what withered your soul. But I do know the one. I do know the one that with one touch. And all you got to do is agree. Because Jesus didn't go touch him. Did you notice? Jesus did not go touch him. Jesus said to him, stretch out your hand. And there's going to be some faith actions that we're going to do in this season. And we're going to see because of it, you'll see a release of the miraculous like never before. Because what, what we're going to do is we're going to speak to things and people. And we're going to raise them up. And we're going to say, get out of your bed and walk. You don't think he'll do that? I think he'll do that. I think he will, if you keep the river running. You know, the river <laughs> doesn't just show up when you need it. It's a daily thing. I keep the river running even if I'm not speaking out loud it's happening inside of me somebody can be having a conversation with me and I can listen to you with my earthly ears and I can speak in tongues in my head and then you're going to say something like wow how did you know that he knows that. It's supernatural. He supernaturally gives us wisdom to be able to release our right hand of authority and cause another person to say, I believe I'll stretch mine out too. I, if, if she will do it, I will do it. If Jesus says it, I will do it. If I look like a fool, if they come against me, if they try to figure out how to take me out or what else can I do to hurt them, uh, I'll still do it. I have a grandson. I won't mention which one at all. But, um, but when he was a toddler, he would just throw these fits. They were just uncontrollable, just sit down and kick and scream. And, um, you know, I'd look at that and just be like, 
you, you need to stop. You need to, you need to stop that. And, he, and, the, and the more you just stood there, the more and the louder he got. He was just pitching a fit. And one day the Lord just began to show me what needed to happen with him. He needed to experience my right hand. <laughs> what, Pastor? Yes, the Bible. Yes, oh, it's the Bible. Yes, sir. <laughs> so I want you to stand to your feet for this word of the Lord. Pastor Willie, I want you to come behind me. Uh, and just play, we speak Jesus. I'm going to read you this word. It was given on October 26, 2019, by a revivalist named Lyndall Cooley. Lyndall Cooley was the worship leader for the Brownsville Revival in Pensacola, Florida. It was a continuous revival. It lasted five years. And he was the worship leader, night after night after night after night. He has music that's known worldwide. He has books he's written. He's had sermons he's preached. And when I brought him here, I was so embarrassed because only like 80 people came to, to encounter what this man brought. But then I realized a lot of people have no idea sometimes who's walking among them. If we don't know when Jesus is walking among us, how are we going to honor his servants? Right? And so this is the word. He came to this pulpit. He led worship. He did all the worship. About an hour or more. Then he walked over to this pulpit. And this is what he said. He leans over. And I am not going to read it all to you. It's too long. But we'll post it. Is that good? And he said. I hear the word of the Lord to this church. Because you have made room for me. The Lord says I will make room for you. And I will enlarge your borders for you. Because my eye goes to and fro across the earth looking for worshipers. And you desire to fill a room full of people to adore my name. It's what has cost you everything. And the Lord said, I've seen that. And I'm pleased with it. And because of that, I'm going to make a way through an impossible door. You can grab that if you want to. God sees the price you've paid. He sees you making a place for his presence. And he says, because of that, I want to open to you an impossible door. And then he said to us as a church, I am going to open up an impossible place. And I'm going to expand you. And I am going to make room. I'm skipping down now. It says, because you adore me in my name. I'm going to send you a harvest. And I'm going to make the room increase in my glory. My glory will smell to the lost like bread in the oven. They'll smell it in the streets. And they'll find out where the oven is. And where the glory is cooking. And they'll come to my presence. When Lyndall gave us this word and we walked out into the parking lot that night. I'm not kidding you. It smelled like a bakery out there he looked over he goes there a bakery no those guys are a western town and I mean, there, there's nothing 
but it was so strong. We all could smell it. And it's just like a little kiss from heaven where he said, see, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. And if you'll be faithful to my word, I will heal them, deliver them, and set them free. Glory to God. Because I have plans. Because you made room for me. And I'm going to make room to you. For you. I've gone to the corners of the nations. And the world. And I've looked for those who value my name above all. And having found them, the Lord says, watch it, here come the camels. I am about to make supernatural provision for them. And I'm going to raise up a hedge that will stop the fiery darts of the enemy. That will cause them to fall. Oh, you'll see the darts coming. You'll know the accusations are there. But the Lord says, my shield is about you. And my banner over you is love. And my shield of glory will be a rear guard and a protector. Why? Because you made room for me. And the Lord says, what I do, I'm going to do it quickly in the earth. For the day of my wrath is coming soon. And I'm calling my people to be near me like never before. I am calling them out of the trenches of worldliness. The Lord says, I'm detaching you from the cares of this world. And I'm preparing you for another place. But forget not, you are strangers and aliens. And then we kind of giggled here because he says, you are the original alien nation. He said, I've not called you to be Americans. I've called you to be children of my kingdom. So I prepare you by, de by detaching you. So you don't know why some things have fallen off your life. You don't know why some people have left your life. You don't understand some of this detachment. But God says he's doing it so that he can make room. So he says, be careful to listen to my spirit and allow my spirit to detach you from the things that don't seem so important, but they could be in the future and they could hold you back. Sounds like the road. The Lord says that I'll answer your prayer about your children and your family. But the Lord also wants us to remember that unless you hate your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, you're not worthy of being with me. And even if your family turns against you, and even does that which is ungodly, you go ahead and love them, but you don't back down from my precepts. And the Lord says, I will strongly uphold you. So today I put a sickle in your hand, and I put a sound in your voice, and I plant this house as a house of worship and prayer. Attend to me, says the Lord. Attend to me and agree with me. And the Lord says, I'll do beyond what you imagine. Why are you asking for crumbs? Ask for loaves. Ask big. And I will give you the souls you crave and the glory you crave. And the presence you crave. And I will support it. I'm not going out of business, says the Lord. And I'm not in financial trouble. I'll support my work, says the Lord. Yeah. You receive that? <laughs> receive that? You receive that from the Lord? Did any of that apply to you today? Does any of it apply to you today? So like I said, we have had an attack. My whole, my family has had an attack. By family. And we've had family that has slandered us. 
and done evil against us. And we will not stop. No, that's right. I just want to say we won't stop. We love them, but we won't stop. Amen. It's like I told that grandson. I love you, but you're not going to do this anymore. I'm going to lift my right hand against this bit. Hear the word of the Lord. So while Pastor Willie and, and everyone that's here leads us through this song again, there's a couple of things I want you to, to look at in your life. I want you to check and see, do you have any withering or dryness with the move of God in and through your life? Do you have it? That's one thing. I want you to ask the Lord that question. And then I want you to ask the Lord, could I be part of what you're doing in the earth? Because I want my life to smell like bread. Okay? So we're going to sing it. And the altar is open, and God is going to move here in power. He's going to move here in power. He is going to break some of you out of these patterns and cycles, like Pastor Tim said. I'm telling you, it's high time. You're, you're, you're too big for that any 